Awesome. Let me uh, just really appreciate uh, once more uh, Apmo for just being such a blessing to us. Let's appreciate. Yeah, thank you so much for being a blessing to us. Um, and I think today you really challenged us uh, to really think through, <laughs> to think through. But then I think one of the things that I love about you is you're not just about thinking, you're about doing. So uh, we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of practice just like we did yesterday. Um, let me just say that I think some of us are living this out. Um, it was interesting, I had a good chat with uh, Tinsu, Pastor Tinsu from Mavuno Addis, uh, and was just in awe. I was just in awe at how, at how their small little startup church is on fire for evangelism. Uh, my goodness, these guys are just giants. Uh, they're changing. I mean, it's just that sense of sharing your faith. And I don't know, I mean, I wish, uh, I wish my PA guys were fast enough to deliver a mic to her right now because I'd have asked her a question. Uh, but they look like they're all just, having their, just finishing their tea. Oh, there's a mic here. I, I clean my, oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. So, Pastor Tinsu, I haven't warned you, but <laughs> if you don't mind just standing and, and just sharing a little bit about the pretty girl strategy. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Her husband called it that, but yeah, tell, tell us about it. Yeah. Okay, um, every Wednesday in our church, we'll go out for evangelism. Uh, first, before we go out. So, we so, so every Wednesday, as a, as a church, we do what? Evangelism. All right. Are you a Mavuno church, by the way? Because <laughs> is there a Mavuno church that does that? No. It's not intense. Every? All right. Sorry, sorry. I just, I just love your story. I just want to make sure they don't miss it. All right. Every Wednesday as a church. Just keep going. Yeah. Every Wednesday we go out. Before we go out, we pray together. Uh, every leaders. And we invite people, our friends. And we pray and we distribute to different places. Two, two by two, we go out. And uh, most of the time, uh, I, uh, I go out with my friend because it will be easy to go out with your friend. Yeah. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't go out uh, as, a, as just to preach or just to, uh, to tell them about Jesus. We go out as a friend, you know, we'll invite them to, for coffee. Maybe we'll pay for them about, the, we, about the, we pay for the coffee, we talk and uh, like, yeah, we, t we tell them. And we use different strategies, you know. Uh, we may sometimes tell them about our story. And uh, sometimes we just, uh, we, today we are feeling good. Do you want to know about my story? And we, we keep going with that strategy. Wow. Yeah. And then, uh, pa Pastor Tumim, if you could just add, because you said you think it works because they're pretty girls. Uh, so yours is a little different. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you guys... So you said theirs is 100% effective because everybody wants a pretty girl to tell them a story, right? Yes. <laughs> as, as, as she said, uh, we do that. And some, some uh, go for public evangelism. They go to taxi station and like that. And uh, <laughs> she and her friend both are very beautiful. So, By the way, we dress on purpose. Nice dress. Dress yeah. nice. <laughs> wow. Are there any pretty girls in the building? All right, you're learning some serious evangelism here. All right, let's go. Yeah, then uh, they will go to anyone, uh, one by one. Uh, then they will talk to them nicely. Okay, I listen, listen, listen. <laughs> they will go to, to some person or one by one, and they, they, they will talk to uh, someone that, like um, nicely, nicely, very nicely. Like this, they will say, uh, I want to introduce you my, my love. Oh, really? <laughs> Your love? Yes, my love. He is so good. He is an <laughs> amazing person. Uh, he is different from any, anyone. So I want to introduce you. Who is that? Then, then they will tell uh, to him. Then uh, we, when they tell to him, they can take five minutes or ten minutes. They will be patient to them. They will listen everything, and sometimes for your sake I will come. For your sake, <laughs> you, you are, you are <laughs> 
and uh, others laugh, maybe laugh or maybe question, and and you know they are they are they are experiencing different things. Wow. And the other thing, uh, th there were two two people who go uh, to 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 the, the 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 person less than them, like uh, in quotation. I mean, uh, either uh, either like lower, street, so lower uh, social yeah, class, yeah, station, yeah, 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 street boys and like that. So I, I I just challenged them. That is because of fear uh, still. So uh, we can still challenge the, the, the others, like uh, rich people or educated or any other. It's so uh, I, 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 I was uh, going with, with them also and challenging uh, people in that status uh, who are like untouchable. But <laughs> we were talking to them, and it's going good. Wow. We are doing great. Oh, by, come by on. Just appreciate Mavuno Addis in the house. Now, I want to say something about movements. Movements work differently from churches. Because in churches, energy comes from the center. In movements, energy comes from everywhere. And I think I am just, when I heard that story, I didn't even want to look shocked. I was like, how did these guys know that evangelism is a thing that God is going to challenge us? I mean, it's like the Holy Spirit has already been giving you steps ahead of everybody else. You may be one of the, the younger churches, one of the maybe the smaller churches, but somehow you guys are aligned with what the Holy Spirit is saying uh, in this season. So I think uh, as I heard that story, I thought, my goodness, every Wednesday, the church just has a passion. Go out, have coffee with friends, talk to people in the streets, go to coffee shops and meet people. I mean, they just have gotten into that attitude of we're going to do it and we're just going to keep doing it because this is what a Mavuno church does. And I really, really love uh, the, the joy that these guys have as they share the stories. Uh, they shared with me quite a lot of stories from there. Now, uh, one of the things I really want to uh, just lean into as we've been talking, we talked about the fact that our mission is turning into fearless influences of society. And we've said that we're not shifting. This is what our mission is. It's a passion for the lost. Come on, somebody. Isn't that what we're being taught today? Yeah. It's easy to be Mavuno by name, but not by deed. And it's easy, to say you ha it's, it's easy to say that you're about ordinary people, but your church is about the same people. And those people stopped being ordinary a long time ago. And you're still focused on just entertaining them and giving them the next class and the next class. And you've forgotten that people are dying outside. And your church is, is diminishing because you're not doing any marketing. You're not doing any evangelism. We talked about, Apmo talked to, to us about that. So turning ordinary people into fearless influence. It's about discipleship. So when those people come into church, we retain them through discipleship. And he's given us a brilliant strategy, which is what we're talking about. We always are enfolding people into our discipleship communities. That's what we're doing. Why? Because this is the tool that God has given us to keep people in. Now we have a place to turn, turn them. And then society. We'll never reach people if we're reaching people in the church. <laughs> We step out into society to change people. So everything we're learning, it's like God is showing us, I called you to this thing 15 years ago. Now let me show you what it was I was calling you to. Let me show you the how, how you're going to be able to, to do this thing. And we also talked about that our, our vision is to plant a culture-defining church in every capital city of Africa and gateway city of the world by... 2035, bless the Lord. And what we've said is, this thing, we could shout it and sing it, but the only way it's going to happen is if we invite people, if we reach people, if we unfold people, and if every single member of our church is a potential church planter. And that's really what we're talking about. How do we turn every one of us? Now, the interesting thing is, this group that is here, this is Mavuno's core. This is our leadership core. You are it. So if you are not able to do the things we're talking about, trust me, Mavuno will never do the things we're saying. So we learned yesterday, a believer prays for how long? At least. All right, and Apmo said something. I think you said it so nicely. Any believers in the house? Amen. Anybody who prayed one hour this morning? Now we can see the believers. You know, there's the guys who shout, and then there's the guys whose hands are up. Eh? So what we're really saying, guys, is let's stop shouting. Let's start doing. Oh, 
Any pastors in the house, apart from Pastor Anne-Marie? Okay, okay, okay. By the way, we're not becoming a legalistic movement, but we're just saying, listen, this is discipleship. Discipleship is saying we do. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, right? You can't be shy about your spiritual walk and then hope people emulate it. Huh? How many people prayed three hours this last night? Just put up your hand. It's okay. You're not being proud. So there are four pastors in the house. Bless the Lord for those pastors. Yeah, bless the Lord. It's not a spiritual competition. And Abmo was very gracious to us. You even see his hand was not up. He's very gracious. Even mine is not up. I'm very, by the way, it's not, it's not legalism here. We're not, saying, we're not saying that you have to become a pastor overnight. <laughs> we're not saying you have to pray three hours. But we're just saying, guys, let's just begin the process. Let's tarry with God for an hour every day. Let's just make that a basic requirement. You cannot reproduce what you're not. Amen? So let me just ask one more time. Again, just, again, remember, this is not legalism. We're not trying to make people to feel ashamed. We're not trying to make you do things because other people are doing them. But I just want to ask one more time. Let me see your hand if you prayed at least one hour this morning or yesterday. All right? Just keep it up. All right? So, guys, as your hands are up, I just want to commend you. And the reason I'm commending you is because God says we must be not just hearers of the word, we must be doers of it as well. Huh? And I'm saying that because I woke up this morning highly challenged by what we had yesterday. And I said, God, I cannot not pray one hour. I can't. Not be the th my family is dying. There are people in my life who are dying. I can't not pray. I can't run out of things to say to you. And by the way, I prayed and I prayed. And at some point, it was feeling long, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but then at some point, I started actually remembering all the people I need to pray for. Eh? And then at some point, I looked at my watch, and I'd done one and a half hours, and I was like, oh, no, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. You know, it's like the time just went. Huh? Um, I didn't try. I just began to realize I have so, much, so many people who are dying in my life, I cannot not pray. Are you understanding what we're saying? So I want to ask this question tomorrow. Right? Um, and this is a gracious class. And my hope is, in fact, not my hope. <laughs> my plan <laughs> is that 100% of us will put up our hand. Yeah? And it's not, it's not because, again, it's not legalism. Just walk around. By the way, if you have nothing to say, that's okay. Because even when you start dating sometimes, you sit with somebody and you're thinking of what to say. If you've not been talking to your wife for a long time and you start sitting, you'll start even thinking, what, do we, what did we used to talk about? It's okay. But your presence is important. It symbolizes something. It symbolizes your desire. It symbolizes you're open to, to growing in that relationship. And I believe our Father is so gracious. By the way, even if you just get there and you just listen to worship songs and just lift up your hands and sing those songs because you've run out of things to pray at the beginning, God will help you. He, 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 praying? Get your Bible. Open the Psalms. Just start praying through the Psalms. Uh, if you've run out of things to say, just start to pray through the Psalms. Uh, open a psalm, Psalm 24. <laughs> just pray. Every verse you pray it and then just say it in your own words back to God. And you'll be surprised that you become more and more fluent as we practice. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Awesome. So, um, my time. That's what happens to people like me. We hype people and then time has finished. Um, where is that microphone? Uh, all right, let me just ask um, Worship Harvest Team. You guys, are these guys amazing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just going to put you on the spot because uh, you guys, I've seen up doing, up more doing this for you guys. You guys are always so smart when he does that. So, uh, so I just want to ask, uh, okay, this is no kidding. Any, anything on your heart? Anything that as you heard about evangelism, as you heard about prayer, as you've seen us, is there anything you just want to, you, you want to push into or just like, here's something I want to share, an example, testimony, something. Just, you, we are where you guys were a year ago. What would you have wanted someone to say to you at that point? Come on, Pastor Angie. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Oh, come a little, yeah, come, come, come so people can see you, yeah. 
Good afternoon. Hey. <laughs> I have grown a lot from accountability. I'm able to pray for one hour because I'm accountable. Hmm. How am I accountable? Yeah. I'm on a Zoom call with other people for one hour. So just explain how that works. Every day. Every day. Everyone is praying everywhere from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Zoom. So then the people I lead know I have prayed for one hour. The people I lead, I know they have prayed for at least one hour every day. So, wait, so is it a prayer meeting that you're it's leading? It's a prayer meeting. On, you turn on, get onto Zoom, and we start praying. Okay. So everybody's just doing their prayer. <laughs> you're not praying that Pastor Andrew is praying for us. No. No. Sometimes there'll be a word. Have you received a word? And people will share words or share words in the chat. Or there'll be a, a short teaching segment, and then we'll do Holy Communion at the end. But then I realized that if we had talked prayer and not been in an accountability space, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. Because you desire it in your heart, but it's easier for me to be asleep at five. It is easier. Than to Amen? actually, <laughs> <laughs> than to actually wake up and pray. That when I put my name on a rotor, we had a 24 hour prayer watch that I will be praying at 4 a.m. That I must go into the WhatsApp group and say, I've started praying. I'm on duty. Hmm. Then at 5, I say, I am off duty. If I've received, and it takes, it takes just refusing to be independent. It takes refusing to think that you can, you can do it. I got this. I've got this. I'm, I'm grown up. So the fact that I've had to be accountable has helped me because one, two years ago, we were not a praying church. Yeah. We desired it. We knew it was important, but we were not it. And I believe one of the things that has helped us is being accountable. It's Apostle Mose calling us for prayer as pastors at Worship Harvest Nalia at 6 a.m. Hmm. So you're either there or you're not there. If you're not there, you haven't prayed. If you're there, then you've prayed. Then he's teaching us how to pray. Because we get there and he's, the things he's saying, he's playing music. We all use the same music to pray at Worship Harvest. It's, there's a Benny Hinn, three CDs, instrumental, it's Master's Healing Touch. All of them last approximately one hour. So we know when the CD ends, one hour has ended. I think what I'm saying is be accountable. It's actually going to help you. So wait, wait. I love, and why, why, why I ask these guys is because we're spending a lot of time with them as the exec team. So we're getting a lot of nuggets, and I just feel like it's so good to hear it from them. Huh? Like they they kind of they unpack for us some of the stuff that Apostle Mose is, is mm -hmm. teaching us. Mm -hmm. So when you say everybody's praying, um, what, what's everybody? Like, like, so is everybody in Worship Harvest on the same Zoom call? Mm -mm. Uh-huh. So I'll give an example. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel and I lead the peculiar cluster. So in the different clusters... And cluster is network for a us. A network. Yeah. So the different network leaders are praying with the campus pastors in that network. Yeah. And then at the different location, the cohort shepherds, those are leaders of missional leaders. Yeah. Or zonal leaders for us. Zonal leaders. Yeah. Are praying with everyone in their zone. Mm. Okay, so I know that if my zone has 50 people, there should be 50 people on the call. So while we are praying, we used to, we used to do it as locations. We've tried, we've tried to the pray as a ship church, the, the, whole lobby, campus, yeah. the whole campus, but it's, it's, it's now easier. So, but also then the zonal leaders are, are starting to gain more authority and more over the people they lead. So we'll be praying. So everybody comes on the Zoom call at yes. 5? Come on the turn. Zoom call, turn on your videos. Music is proof. I can share music. We share. What if I like walking around? We start around. with CD too. You can walk around. Just, just have your laptop So long as my on. camera is showing that I'm there walking around. Yes. Okay. Why are we doing Because it's like, oh, I, I can't pray with my video on. Yeah, you're entering my private space. And also, you I see, haven't put on makeup at 5 yet. Some people do. 
some people do because part of it is like going come into the presence of god wake up earlier yeah wake up earlier get ready da, 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 pray yeah so why are our videos on again accountability one of our values is transparency why is your video off are you actually praying is it bad if i'm your father he's my father he should know that i pray he should know how i pray so our videos are on and we are praying with our videos on and our videos and microphones are on <laughs> so that everybody can hear everybody else everyone can hear everyone so it's else. a bit of a noisy space it is a bit of a noisy space and then and we uh, then we pray if there's if there's if if the leader ha needs to say something which is not often they'll just mute everyone communicate what they need to communicate apostle Moses has taught us how to pray through scriptures and also just the times we spend praying with him sometimes we pray for 30 minutes then he gathers us then he says, this is what I feel is the direction of prayer. Now go back and pray. Then we'd go back and pray. Then we come back together, share words. So that's how we run our prayer meetings. So he taught you how to do it, so that's how you're doing it. Yes, yes. But now we're doing it on Zoom. That time it was face to face. Like, yeah. But now we're doing it on Zoom. I think the biggest thing on my heart is accountability. I get the sense that, you know, everyone is like, prayer is personal. And, I, you know, I don't have to do this thing. But I've learned how to pray because of you guys. Because of accountability, your mind thinks you're so clever. Your mind thinks, I don't know, like you know, I, I, I can do I can do bad all by myself. But actually, <laughs> you can't. You really can't. You need people to hold you accountable. The people you're leading, the people who you. And then on the call, if I have ten zonal pastors and there are only eight, I'm able to have a conversation with the two. Wow. In the beginning, the first thirty minutes of my prayer time was spent calling people on the phone to wake them up. Because people hadn't gone get on to the call, yeah. get on. But now, now they are on. Honestly, I have learned how to pray because I didn't do it by myself. Like you know, when you have the urge and the desire, and you really want to pray, but the devil <laughs> is a liar. <laughs> He'll keep you sleeping. He'll keep, like, all sorts of reasons, you know. But because I'm a leader, I should be on. And and now it's there's such a grace for prayer, and I believe it. It has just come from being a, a, accountable Amen. because it's, it's beyond the desire of what you want to do. It's the releasing. It's just guys, let's let's let, let's do prayer and accountability in groups. It's going to help the movement grow. That's why we didn't have 100% people praying. Because you thought, I can do it by myself. Then you woke up at 7, you're like, oops, tomorrow. I didn't pray. Then tomorrow you wake up, and before you know it, it's even reading the Bible, we do it in accountability. Everyone is reading the same plan. So the, the whole, all 15,000 people have. No, but like the, the, the location pastors are all reading the same plan. So you know. You look at the plan, you know who's 10 days behind, 50 days behind. <laughs> so it's all in accountability. Wow. I think that's the thing I want to say. A allow accountability in your lives. Refuse to be independent. Wow. Yeah. Come on, guys. Was that, was that amazing? Yeah. What a great idea. What a thought. What a, what a scary thought, though. That I'm praying with Pastor Njoro on the same Zoom call every morning. <laughs> I might be blown away. <laughs> but I think what she's saying is, we have desire, but sometimes you need accountability to actually make it happen, isn't it? And many times the reason we don't actually achieve things in our Christian life is because you know it, you hear it, you want it, but there's nobody to walk with you. And it seems to say we do it every Wednesday, but she also said I, we do it with friends. We do it in community. So that I know if I don't come, my friend will have to do it alone. There's more likelihood that I'll come because I know somebody will be there. So maybe that's something we can even just begin to start uh, working on and working on together uh, as a team, uh, uh, as teams, as campus teams, as network teams. I think it's a fantastic idea. Any, somebody, I think Jeremy was going to say something as well. Oops. Hi. Hey. So one of the things that I found very helpful for me is the ability to follow instructions. And I've been born again, I got born again in 1993. Wow. So that's, that's about 28 years. Some people, many, many here were not born. 
and and for most of my time as a believer, I didn't really have a leader who is giving me instructions. I was more like a free range chicken, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. And then, and then, what's begun to happen in my life is, I began to hear instruction from my apostle and my 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 pastor, yeah. and receive it like it's an instruction from God. And then do. And what that has done for us and for me especially is it has helped me prosper, you know. Um, and so it's that I don't allow myself to be creative around the instruction, but to receive it and to do it. I, I was talking about this the other day. We, were, we had a, a prayer. It was a retreat for the leaders. And, and Apostle Mose gave an instruction that the men should start praying at 4 a.m. Now, so the church prays at 5 together. But the apostle felt in his heart that the men, that men should wake up earlier. earlier. <laughs> so what happened was immediately... I had to make a decision. <laughs> a decision <laughs> to wake up at 4 a.m. to pray. So I have a, a group of all the men at our location, and I put all of them on the WhatsApp group yeah. and told them the instruction has come. It's 4 a.m. So what they do is every time they get up, they send a message awake. Wow. Okay. So you get a hundred messages. Uh, so you have messages coming in. All those messages. Are we now, of course, there are some men who have not joined the group, but those that have joined, they know that this group is supposed to help us pray. So they send a message. And that WhatsApp group has mostly messages saying, I'm awake and I'm praying at 4 a.m. So I had to first lead by example and say, you know what? I have to start praying at 4 a.m. You know? And that was an instruction that I received, and it has changed my prayer life. Wow. wow. So that's, I don't know whether the men send the message and go back to bed. That's up to them. <laughs> but that is just saying, follow instructions. There's so many instructions. Save 20% of your income. You know, that's an instruction. Yeah. And it's for you. So the ability to say, I'm going to soften my heart to receive this instruction because God disciples me through my leader. He talks about giving you shepherds according to his own heart, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in Jeremiah chapter 3. And so I've just put, positioned myself to receive that instruction and to obey it. Wow. And it's helping now, us. This whole accountability thing is powerful because what you're saying is if somebody didn't hold me accountable to pray, I wouldn't be praying. Yeah. You've just said something which I don't know if Abmo will cover tomorrow, but you've talked about that everybody in your discipleship community is expected to save 20%. Absolutely. And it's not a, please might you save, please could you consider saving. It's no, like no, no. If you're a disciple, this is what disciples That's do. That's what you do, but you also have to account for, for you have to show that you've, you've done it. You have to post a slip from the bank and say, I have saved this much this week. Every Friday. Does anybody get a sense that this is going to be one of the wealthiest churches in Africa? They will. Not, no, it's not prophetic. You don't need prophecy to say it. If a church is saving and every member is saving 20% of their income, they will be the wealthiest church in a very short time without prophetic words being uttered. Simply because they are an army. There is alignment. And you know, the problem is many people are like, oh, let me just do my thing. But what's happening? As they're doing their thing, some of them are saving 2%. Some of them are saving negative 10%. And what's happening is they're preaching all the sermons they can about wealth, but they're poor. They're broke. So I think what I'm hearing is very powerful because what you're saying is as we begin to first of all become followers, and then we teach the people following us yes. to follow. This is yes. what discipleship is. Come follow yes. me and I will make you. Something begins to shift in the church. Yeah. And that's what you guys, that's why you've grown. That's why you've seen the revival that you're seeing. Yeah, yeah it's interesting because... When it comes to the, the finances, we had one of those trainings, and you know, Apostle was showing us how he manages his finances, and he has grown. And the rest of us, you mentioned that one of your leaders asked you, yeah. how come you are growing financially, and that's not coming down to us. Yeah. And he showed us, you know, 
and we went and did it and began to experience the growth. And the instruction was, go and teach your people, your disciples. So we went and taught them. So the same instruction we received, we passed on. And the same accountability that is required of us, we are requiring it of them. Yeah. And yeah. so everyone who is a disciple must follow. Wow. Of course, there are those who don't want. They drop off and you leave them behind. But you go. Wow. And it's helped. Wow. Pastor Jeremy, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's do... Let's do a couple more. I can see Pastor B3 and then Pastor Steve. And then we'll, we'll. By the way, I just. My instruction from the Spirit is just to listen to him before my session. So that's what he's told me to do. Is Thank you, Pastor M. Here, these friends of ours tell I, us. Something. I was going to not say anything, but Pastor Jeremy scratched me a little <laughs> with his comment. So I struggled with instruction for a while. And there might be people who are struggling with that. And usually it's because at the core, what you're hearing is someone is trying to make me do something. You know, like when you're in school and, the, and you say, I'm handing in the teacher's assignment. <laughs> it's not theirs. The teacher finished school. <laughs> Everything you're hearing. When I wake up at 5 a.m. to pray under accountability, who is helped? That's good. Is it the pastor who instructed me to pray? Yeah. Is their prayer life better because I woke up to pray at 5 a.m.? Come on, talk to me. Hello. If we are instructed to read a book, in, right now I'm reading like seven books. And I was one of those people who would not read even a book a year. And you can decide to say, I'm not a morning person. So I will not wake up at 5 a.m. I will pray in the evening. But you see, at the place of <laughs> unity is where God has commanded the blessing. From the, from, from the priest. The oil flows. So if the oil is flowing by the instruction of the priest at 5 to 6 a.m., and for you, you have instructed yourself and you are not the priest there, and you are praying at 7 p.m., are you out of the flow or in the flow? Out. So, out. But who is it benefiting? <laughs> when the miracles begin to break out in your family, who is benefiting from the 5 a.m. prayer? Is it your pastor? How about saving every week? Right now, we have to each save, send a screenshot. And Apostle Moses leads by example. We send a screenshot on Friday of how your savings, and they have to be with a date because we don't trust anyone. The date is this of August 2020. The amount of money is this much. And send the current account balance. Because for all we know, you could be going, withdrawing it and redepositing it. Because there are demons that operate among Christians that you know not. So when you finally save 100,000 Kenya shillings, who is richer? Is it Pastor M? No. It's you. When you finally buy that plot of land because you are forced to save, whose life is better? Mine. When you go out on evangelism every week because there is a day in the week where the whole movement goes out to evangelize and you're bringing many to Christ, who is going to be told, well done, good and faithful servant? So you see, when you become a wise child and realize that my parent is for me, that even when they give instructions that I don't enjoy, like when they force you to make your bed every day and you're so angry, they are helping you to learn discipline. It doesn't feel good in the beginning. But when you realize that this person is for me, yeah. that when they say read a book, they are trying to help me grow intellectually. Even though it makes me uncomfortable, I understand that the heart of my pastor is for me. What starts to happen is you become wiser. The Bible says receive instruction and become wise. Yeah. That's how you be, many of you are praying for wisdom. Do you know how you will become wise? By receiving instruction. But you can't pray for wisdom and then reject instruction and keep praying for wisdom. You will continue to pray and continue to be foolish. Come on. Yeah. And I'm telling you as one who was foolish for a while, especially those of us who believe we are spiritual, we hear God. Mm. So you feel for you, God is always telling you something that your leader is not speaking. God is not a God of disorder. When you understand that the heart of... I, I've been, I was telling these guys that me, I've been hearing instructions from your pastor. He stood here recently and said, all of you should buy the book Fearless. I'm not going to ask you to put up your hands. Today is Thursday. Some of you haven't even considered. The worship harvest pastors went and bought the book. All of us. All of us not even like one each. That day we found the money, we bought the book because... That's wisdom. We've started reading. It's in my bag. Started reading it. Why? The man of God gave an instruction. And I become wise. I don't know what's in that book for me. But maybe God has something in the book for me. That hunger. 
He, he just said a few minutes ago, I don't know if you had that instruction. And you know instructions are not... Now, all of you listen. This is an instruction. <laughs> you know, because you know how your parents speak at home? When your mom is like, eh, who poured water here? Do you wait for her to say, someone bring a rug and clean this. A wise child, when mommy says, who poured water here? You run and get a rug and clean. That's an instruction. He just said, maybe we should try it in our networks and our campuses. And some of you are like, great suggestion. For us, we are not going to try it until he's... We are, for the executive team to meet and decide and send us an official email. Wise sons and daughters. Let me tell you, there's something that Apostle Mose said. I think he also borrowed it, but for me, I know it's from Apostle Mose. He said that we walk by common sense. A child doesn't need you to take them to school to learn how to walk. They watch you and say, why is everyone on their twos and I'm on my fours? <laughs> and they get up and start trying. Yeah. And then he says that we run by discipline. Athletes are disciplined. We can bring, who was it? The guy, who, the one who we, we are claiming, Chemutai. Yeah, Chemutai. All of you say that we, we are still in Kenyans. Yes. It's okay, they are in Uganda. They are ours. <laughs> <laughs> so Chemutai, I can assure you, if they put you with Chemutai, you look at Pastor Steve, he's trying to do that walking thing. You will run out of breath. No matter how much your spirit, spirit, tongue speaking, demon chasing, fire spitting, water walking, you will fall down after a few minutes. But Chemtai will keep going. How? There are rules and there are disciplines that make you fly ahead of that. I mean, run faster than others by discipline. Now, you fly by instruction. Oh. Apostle says that pilots don't fly by discipline. And you can't fly by common sense. A pilot who says, mm, I think, let's press this button. The red button looks like it's the one to press today. You know, I saw the other guy in the movie moving this thing. You're going to die. They do not have to think. They don't have to come up with stuff. They fly by instruction. And that's why the person in the airplane will always get there much faster than the one walking or running. There are things that have brought you to this point by discipline, Mavuno. There are things that you understand by common sense as a believer. But if you're going to be the movement that we see and pass. By the way, if you know what we see about you. I don't even know. But for us, we know what we see. We feel so privileged that God has allowed us to be a small part of your story. You guys, the, 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 the mandate on this movement is crazy. Yeah. But you know what you're going to do? I'm going to tell you what one of my disciples says. Sometimes you need to switch off your brain to be able to move faster. And listen to another one who has gone ahead of you and who God has chosen to move you fast. But please, I'm begging you. I'm asking you to receive what I received. Open your heart to your leader. Decide what I decided even about my husband. I would get so offended about all sorts of things until one day someone told me, do you think your husband wakes up saying, how can I offend my wife? <laughs> no. When he does something and it offends you, it was a mistake. And when that's how my heart is, I'm not as offended. I'm like, he made a mistake. He thought he was doing his best to lead our family this way. He made a mistake. I, he's not waking up to see how to destroy us. Yeah. Your leader is not sitting there thinking, how do I control them? <laughs> Take away all their sleep. Make sure they read all my books. And you tell your leader is, a, is like our leader. He's very gentle. He's very, he wants, he, he okay, you know more. A pastor, by the way, Apostle Moses is not what you think he is. You guys think he's so, he's very, his heart is so good. He believes in people so wow. much that you can take advantage of him. And so because his heart is, his heart is so open, he believes you'll go and report someone a thousand times. By the time he releases you, I don't know if anyone else can help you. He, he <laughs> believes in people. He, he, he gives a lot of chances. And also he doesn't like titles and what's that word? Airs around him. He wants to. He likes that freedom to be your friend and that can be your own hindrance. You have to create your personal boundaries around such a leader who doesn't have heirs and that's how I, I perceive your pastor is. So because of that, he's down to earth, he's hanging out, he's, he's bongaring with you, he's, he's so <laughs> cool. You can actually then end up being like those kids who call their parents by name. Yeah, where you find my daughter calling me Beatrice. Hey, B3! And, I th and, and because we are cool, no, there are boundaries. I'm your mother. Yeah. So even when we talk, they, they are, you should, as a wise child, I have created boundaries between me and Apostle Mose. 
I listen for instruction. There are things I won't say. There are things I won't do. Not because he will be okay, but I know that I'm allowing myself to cross a boundary that's going to lead me into foolishness. Mavuno, familiarity, will kill the working of the anointing in your lives. Wow. So wow. I'm begging you, receive this man and the other men and women that God has given you. Don't wait for him to back out an instruction. Be a wise child who listens. When he says something that sounds like a simple suggestion, receive instruction and be wise and fly. Wow. Oh. Wow, thank you, Pastor B3. Thank you, Pastor B3. Uh, one of the things uh, <clears throat> that has been hitting me these past days is one of, one of the things that you shouldn't do as a leader here is go back and say, that this is what we were told or make a suggestion that goes to the effect that uh, Pastor M said this, headquarters said this, uh, that is one of the ways you will get your, <laughs> it is one of the ways you're going to get yourself out of leadership because you're not going to have any influence over your people. Yeah. You need to own up whatever has been agreed upon here so that you can communicate to your people. Uh, one of the things I hate about any leader, and I was sharing with the people in uh, Lifeway, is a leader who keeps on saying, but they told us. Uh, this one told us. Uh, Upmo told us to do this. Uh, or whichever leader. Like, forget that stuff. Own it. I mean, the parts of the worship harvest story that I own. Like, when I'm telling them, I'm like, so we decided. So we did yeah. this. So the thing is, own it. Because if he is your father, whatever is his, is yours. And that is something that we also learned from Upmore, that you know what? Whatever is, of, is his, is yours. I never used to like the whole spiritual parenting thing because I basically didn't understand it until one time Upmore tells me that, you know, he also didn't know it at that point. So he told me, so what I know about spiritual parenting is that if you're a child, you get an inheritance. So it is for you to receive that inheritance. Otherwise, if you're just passing on instructions, you may run out of an inheritance that you will not have possibly a location to lead. Wow. And finally, uh, about, about evangelism, let me ask you just a few questions. If you had a magic wand that had the ability to, uh, you know where I'm going with this, right? If you had the magic wand that had the ability to heal COVID, what would you do with it? Use it. Would you keep it? Would you share it with some people? Yeah. With a few people? At least a few people in your village? The world. The world, right? If you had the magic wand that had the ability to put at least 1,000 KES in everyone's bank account, what would you do with it? Like you can use it for yourself, but then it also has the ability to give everyone else. What would you do? You can, you know, just shout it out. Okay, okay, okay. Finally, if you had the magic one that had the ability to make all marriages just like work, that tick, everything is going on well, what would you do with it? And sell it. Oh, man. So, you already have that magic wand in Jesus. And I would like to let you know that's, an, that's not a very original question or thing that I'm telling you. It's something I also learned from more, but the moment we went ahead and shared that with the other people that were afraid of going, or of going on evangelism, I mean, it just helps you open up your mind. Like, we literally have the magic wand that causes marriages to get better. Uh, it helps families to get richer, yeah. uh, p pull people out of poverty, get, uh, give people supernatural help. So if you already have it, just go ahead and share it with other people. There's something that God has done for you, so he's going to do it for someone else. Thank you. Yeah, Pastor so Steve. just go ahead and share. <laughs> All right. And by the way, we're going to get, there'll be more time, so don't even run out of things. Don't feel you have to, you're running, you have to run out, say everything. We'll do again, we'll do a bit, another opportunity tomorrow as well, but yeah, go ahead, Pastor Florence. Thank you so much. Um, up, up in. <laughs> Pastor Moravi. <laughs> Pastor, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, two things I want to share with you, um, Avuno. The things that brought you up to this place are not going to be the same things that are going to take you to the next level. You've done well. You've done really, really well. We admire you. But to go to the next level is going to take another shift, a mindset shift, 
for you to go to the next level. As we grow up, our undoing can be our experience, our knowledge, our ideas, and our age. And then we settle and we think we know. Yeah. Yet we sometimes need to learn and learn and relearn. One of the things that I've learned to embrace, which I've copied from one of our pastors, is to stay hungry and foolish. Because when you're hungry and foolish, your heart is open to receive and learn more. These guys here are my big sisters. I like to hang out with them, go to their groups, learn from them, because they say things in passing, and I catch them and run with them. Every single time Abmo is teaching, even if I don't have to be in the space, maybe he's teaching a class that maybe I don't have to be there, I'm not signed up for that group, or I don't know, whatever, or whatever he has taught I already know, I'll still go. Mm because I know he's going to say something and I'll catch it afresh or I'll catch it new and it will change my life. Yeah. But you have to intentionally, as you grow up, especially in salvation, because we think in salvation, because we think I've grown up, I'm mature, I've been born again for 20 years and that can hinder your growth. So stay hungry, stay foolish, keep your, your bowel empty so you can be able to receive more. Yeah. One of the things we need to do in this season is maybe empty ourselves of our knowledge and our experiences so God can pour into us a fresh, fresh it. instruction. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what's going to take us to the next level. Yeah, yeah. The next thing I want to say is there is nothing, my, this God told me as a, as, a, as a person, that Flo, there is nothing your leader is asking you to do that they have not done. Wow. And I'm, I'm very honored to be led by Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari because there is nothing they've asked us to do that they have not done. And there's a reason why they are where they are and I'm not yet there. Mm, mm, mm. So if, I'm, if they're giving me instruction and I'm not following it yet, I'm not even where they are, yeah. then, then there's something really wrong right there. Yeah, yeah. When I was with the LifeWay team, I kept saying, guys, you have not tapped in. First of all, Mavuno, you've done well and God is taking you to the next level. But you haven't even tapped into this man fully before he goes to the next level. Or which he's already on the next level. There is so much in this mind that I perceive not most of us have caught. The reason why my leader is where he is is because there are things that he's doing that he's asking me to do so I can go where he is. And so that's, it goes back to the thing of empty yourself and learn, relearn, so you can go where he is. Yeah. And there's nothing he's asked me to do that he hasn't done. If oh. it's saving 20%, he has saved it and shown it to me. If he is praying, he has prayed. And most times he does that thing before he tells us. Yeah. If it's a new thing, he'll first try it out because he doesn't want us to do something he hasn't done. And if he's doing it and it's not yet catching, but he wants us to, to see it, to, to try it out, he'll tell you, guys, there's this thing I've started, start. Because there's a reason why he is where he is. The things that he's doing, he's passing them on to me so I can get where he is. So it's all these things that we are being given, instruction and everything, they're not to harm you like Pastor B3 has said. They are actually to take you as an individual to the next level. Wow. So receive your next level. Come on. Be hungry for your next level. Thank you. Guard yeah. it jealously. It's your yeah. next level. Because I know we're talking about movement, and I was telling the point in the group where I was, movements are not just our, our word or, our, I don't know, it's, it's the people. It's yeah. us. So when we say worship harvest is a movement and we are serving 20%, who is the movement and who is rich? It's us. It's still me who is rich. Yeah. So this is receive your next level as an individual. I know that people in a group where I was yesterday, Pastor M, one of the people was very anxious that when they said, uh, when we shared that we have 800 people on staff and there are two, I mean oh, on, yeah. um, on, on yeah. our databases, yeah. and then we have two staff members and, and one volunteer. One of the people got so anxious and said, what does that mean for me? I built my life all around this. That even as God is speaking to us right now, and all of this is being shared, he has you in mind. Yeah. Mm. He does. He has you in mind. And, he, and the Bible says that the plan he has for you is to prosper you. So your responses shouldn't be fear. Because I sense there is fear and guarding and protecting yourself. No, open up your heart. Because the plans that are being shared here are actually to prosper you and to take you to the next level. So receive your next level level there is nothing your leaders are asking us to are asking all of us to do because even me right now i'm learning yeah. and i'm receiving lots of instruction but they are to take me to the next level so i've been texting the group i lead my disciples and telling them guys i have so much to share with you because i also want them to go to the next level wow. Wow. so open up your heart receive learn and learn relearn 
follow really hard and do, be hungry, stay foolish, because God wants to take you to the next level as an individual. Wow. Just a minute before you go. Pastor, Pastor Ari, if you could just come, because I, I think I s you have something you want to share. But how long have you been a location pastor? I laid a location that I planted, and I took a break. And now for this particular location, we've laid it for 11 months now. How long have you and uh, Pastor Steve been married? We are making seven years. Seven years. Yes. Uh, okay, this is really personal. Okay, maybe don't tell me your age. How old is Pastor Steve? Pastor Steve is th making 31 in November. I'm 32. 32. 32 hey, in November. Hey, yeah. I made 32 in, wow. in April. You know, I, I see you guys. You have such authority. Don't they have authority? But do you hear up more when they're talking? It's like, it's like even the last, it just sounds like there's an authority. You've made Psalm 133 come true. Where, as you talked about, just the oil flowing. Mm -hmm. And as I heard her and her husband speak in the Lifeway group, it's like, it was, in fact, I told us more afterwards, I'm glad you weren't there because I began to realize you don't have to be there. Like your people are just, they have the same energy, they have the same conviction. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what you're showing us and demonstrating, even as you come up and all say the same conviction, mm -hmm. is the power of an army. Mm -hmm. It's the power of an army. I mean, we, we know we, we are called to be an army, Mavuno, isn't it? Yeah. We know that. We've always known that. But I think what you're showing us is what it takes, mm -hmm. the discipline it takes. I love that illustration that you guys gave us. To run, to walk. Oh, to, to walk, to run. To walk is common, common sense. sense. To run, to is, run discipline. is discipline. And to fly, to fly. is by instruction. Mm. Hey, Pastor Florence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll just share with you a little story. Um, my husband and I, when we just got in married, we struggled a lot financially. And right about that time, he had written a book in 2018, Straightforward Financial Growth. Apostle Moses had written yes. a book. And we, I was on staff. And before he even launched the book, he took us through the, all the basics and the concepts first. And because you know, you're on st when you're on staff, there's a way you switch off and think you know what's happening here. There's a familiarity, which uh, I think Pastor B3 was talking about. So you, not, you, you don't catch what God is releasing in a season. And I didn't. And I didn't. I would go back home and tell my husband, yeah, there's this thing. That was the thing. But eventually in 2019, God opened my eyes to see that this message was not just straightforward financial growth. It was God's, a message from God to me and my husband. We signed up for a mastermind. We bought the book, signed up for a mastermind. And in a four months, our income had more than doubled from just... When you see, when you read the book, it's simple. You're thinking, well, this is, well, saving is saving. Well, you know, making money is making money. And he realized this is an anointing that this person has, and God has sent him in my life to catch this. And how do I catch it? By first of all, receiving every message he sends me. Is it in a book? Is it in an audio message? And so by just going to Straightforward Financial Growth Mastermind, he coached us. We read his book. We started practicing the principles. Our income more than doubled. By just listening to the person God has anointed for this message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just last, wow. last month when he told us, now you're going to separate your incomes and, and start accounting in different groups, okay, so that all of you can grow as individuals strong financially. Last month, I, uh, as I was trying to, I was, we, 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 what's the word? As you accounted for. Yes, as I, as I was taking note of my income, I realized that before the month had come to an end, I had made 12 million, which is an equivalent of three, 342. I was kind of hoping, I was kind of hoping you would say it. I didn't want to prompt it because I was in the group when you shared it. Okay. So just say it in Kenya shillings. 342,000 Kenya shillings. Okay, hold on, hold on. This is for you and Pastor Steve. No, this is just me. Is that a, is that, ki that's Kidogo money for Kenyans, right? <laughs> we're not, we're not impressed. That, that the wife has made 342. We don't even know what the husband has made yet. Before the month had come to an end. I think what you guys are doing, you're giving us evidence. Yes. There are people who teach with principles and theory, and the other people who teach with? Evidence. And you've heard her talk about? Just ask your neighbor, did you make 342 alone by yourself last month? Just, uh, just ask them right now. But, 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 so listen up, listen up. You said, listen up, you said this didn't happen just like that. No, it didn't happen just like that. It's the thing I'm sharing with us that you, like, and I was telling the Lifeway team, you have this man 
who has anointing and graces. And Apmo told us to recognize graces when we see them. And he has all this grace upon him. He has all that grace upon him. I cannot tell you that there's anything amazing I did to earn that. But by just aligning with the man God has sent me, because in him there's something I need that will take me to the next level. And so everything he tells me is exactly as I do it, as he tells me to do it. And I cannot explain to you there's anything magical I did, but I understand in life waiting that spiritual things are spiritual things. When we try to understand them with, can, with our kind of mind, we won't understand them. That's why we yeah. leave them here. But maybe you, someone talked about, is it switching off your mind? Somebody talked about, yes, if, yes, if, you, if you're waiting for your mind to, first, first to, to, to click it and understand it, first leave your mind behind and receive the instruction and run with it. Wow. Wow. And run with it. And so everything, every, ever since the day we aligned with that message, we've not struggled financially. We've been the, we are one of the, big, the top givers in our location. Love it. And, and, it, and it's not that we, we are even racing towards it. We desire it. We want to give, be the biggest givers to this movement. Yeah. We want to be the top tithers. We want to give big time to everything because, because we want to. I love it. And the thing is, the more we want to, the more God has also increased us. And the more he issues instructions, the more we follow, the more we oh. run even and fly much Come faster. On. Come on. <laughs> so just empty your heart. The things that you did that brought you to where you are are amazing, but they're not going to take you to the next level. And the thing is that that's so good that I've been um, thanking God for lately is that, God, you're really so good. Instead of me going out there hustling, you've made it so easy for me because you badly want me to get it. You badly want me to be rich. You badly want me to become the greatest leader. You badly become, want me to become whatever you've created me to become. So the thing, that, the thing that you do is send me a man and say, just follow this man. In him is the right food you need that's going to make you become. And by simply just following, guys, I don't know how that thing works. It's so spiritual. You just follow a person and you become. And you become. In a few months, in a few months, Pastor M, the story you told me, you were telling, asking me to share. No, don't share it now. We'll share it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, that story I want you to, to save. Okay. By the way, this, is she a powerball? Yeah! What? Come on, let's appreciate Pastor Flo. Yeah, this, I, I want us to talk about that tomorrow, so let's, let's save it. Yeah. Pastor Ari. So you've heard about up more. Yeah. The person you haven't heard about or met is his amazing power-packed partner. The woman who was at his side when they started this movement and who is now the leader of their main, their, their key location, uh, Worship Harvest Nalia. Uh, so she comes to us not just as Apmo's wife, but she is a significant, in fact, a critical leader uh, in Worship Harvest movement. Come, come on, just put it together for <laughs> Pastor Ari. Woo! <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Wow. You, know, you know, some people can't just share. Let me just share. You have to introduce them properly, isn't it? Well, pressure. <laughs> I, I'll just follow on from what Pastor Florence was saying. She talked about 12 million shillings made even before the month had ended. And that was an instruction that we were given to write down our income every day. Okay. Write down your income every day, and at the end of the week, write down the total income. Account for it on a certain group, and all of us do it. And when we started writing down our income every day, we found that we were earning much more money than we were before we were doing it. Yeah. So that was an instruction. Yeah. Another instruction I'll tell you is that on the team, we don't borrow money without accounting to the leader like you don't borrow money unless you've asked your leader and they've given you permission because we believe we are going to be very rich and we cannot be rich while borrowing <laughs> and then the debt that we may already be having we clear it every week every week you need to account and say I cleared this amount of money towards this particular debt still an instruction because we believe we have a mandate for financial prosperity and we are the leaders and we have to model it. Wow. So I just wanted to give a few examples of some of the instructions that we have been given that we are following and seeing amazing results. Wow. Amazing results. Wow. 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 So 
if you are a couple here, hmm. Pastor M and Ka Pastor Carol are doing something that they call money, couples Couple. and money. <laughs> it should come without saying that you should be a part of it. As the core team. As the core team. Because you know what? These guys are, are, are prospering financially. And you want to prosper financially. So go and be part of it. Go buy all Pastor M's books. Read them more than once. Get instruction. Do it. Listen to his messages. Get instruction. Do it. Because you have dynamite in your midst, and that's one of the way of following. Wow. So, for us, we are going to follow. We are going to buy the books. Yeah. We've already bought them, and we are getting instruction. And we don't want you to be left behind because you have treasure in your midst. You have treasure in your midst. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Ari. Come on, let's appreciate Pastor Ari. <laughs> You know, it's, I'd, I'd be honest with you. If this happened last year, I'd have been very embarrassed. Um, I, would, I would not even have asked them to share uh, because I would not have wanted that kind of attention. But one of the pastors here alluded to the fact that I shared with them that one of my team members, one of my exec members asked, Pastor M, you have a gift. You and Pastor Carol, you prosper financially. We can see it. And we know it's not from church money. God has allowed you to just have an ability to multiply the resources in your hands. And the person asked me a very hard question. They said, why? Why isn't that blessing in our lives? And at that point, I had no answer. I really hadn't. In fact, I felt a bit embarrassed being put on the spot. If you know anything about me, I don't like attention of that kind. But, you know, I came to realize, and part of what Pastor Apostomo has been sharing this week has been very helpful for me to understand that many times when the leader doesn't lead, people perish. If I'm shy to share with you the things that have helped me be, then you will work around me and you will be poor. And to be my fault because I was not able to say, follow me. That's what Jesus says. And Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. He was not shy to say that. And so I think one of the things, I, 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 as, as Pastor Ari said, is we talked to the exec team and we said, how many of you um, have done this. I remember at one point when we launched Couples and Money with Pastor Carol, we said we want to help couples become wealthy. And we gave a discount, by the way. Uh, the cost costs, I think it costs 25,000 shillings. Uh, at that time, we said we are going to give a discount so that all pastors can take, can take advantage. And Pastor Shu was one of the ones who took advantage. We were, I think we gave a discount of like 5,000 shillings. Like we're like, we're not even going to, we're not even, it's just going to be a gift. Um, I think Pastor Hago signed up, Pastor Milton signed up, Pastor Shu signed up. I can tell you the pastors, Pastor Sheila signed up. It was like six pastors signed up. And honestly, I didn't catch feelings because I figured the rest have sorted out their lives. They don't really need help, you get. So for me, I was just like, it's not for me to insist or to try and help you. You already have helped yourself, you know where you're going. So I think what, what I'm, I'm not even saying, by the way, please catch my heart. Huh? I have no condemnation. And I still don't have feelings. <laughs> um, when I wrote the book, Fearless, and I shared last yesterday so confidently, you, you need to read the book. It's because I've realized, I mean, at the beginning of the year, I think, in fact, Pastor Njoro, you remember you asked me, give a discount, please. And I remember as I thought about it, I said, okay, 900. But I wasn't even going to do it. Because when the book was launched, I actually gave a staff discount. And I think at that time I even said something like 600 or 700. 500. Oh, 700. Okay, I said 700. And people didn't buy it. So I'm like, but this is our story. This is your story. You've plugged into the vision and you don't know what the vision is. And maybe you feel disconnected. Why am I even here? Why did God even call me? But the tool is there to help you begin to understand. This is how I align with this story. So I think what, what I'm hearing with these guys, and by the way, it's, it's very easy for this to sound like it's Pastor M trying to draw people to himself. Absolutely not. In fact, I'm the last person who wants people around me. I'm not that person. But I've come to realize that God has called me to be a leader and he will hold me accountable to lead the people who, call, who come. So 
I, 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 I have come to understand, even for me, I shared with the LifeWay team, and I learned with this, I shared with the LifeWay team that Pastor Njoro, and I want to honor him publicly, I did it with the LifeWay team, I said, this man taught me how to follow. I was not a follower. <laughs> I thought I was, but I wasn't. But when I hired Pastor Njoro and he came on the team, he started doing some things that taught me a very powerful lesson. He taught me that fathers give birth to, to sons, but sons call out fathers. That it's a job of a son. You know, some of you may be at that place where you're feeling orphaned, you're feeling I have no father, nobody cares about me, my boss doesn't. But you know what he did? And by the way, I was that father who, for me, I was like, I'm, a, I'm your boss, <laughs> get the job done. And Pastor Njoro, the first thing he told me is, you're my spiritual father. Nobody had even used that language. In fact, I was a bit uncomfortable. I was like, eh. <laughs> uh, And then he said, I'm here because God has called me to serve this vision and to serve your vision. And then he proceeded to do some very uncomfortable things. Uh, he, and Mi he, he said, me and Mi Miriam and I, we're your children. So they started visiting us and said, we're just visiting our parents to see how you guys are doing. I'm like, which staff member visits Pastor M to see how he's doing? <laughs> staff members call Pastor M to come when they're in trouble. He'd be like, we've come to see. And then he would not come just to visit. He would actually come with, we had you guys needed this. We came to help. Uh, I remember the first Christmas he came to my house and said, we just prayed and we feel like we want to provide you a Christmas goat. Yay! Sorry for reporting you and putting you on the spot. I hope I'm not embarrassing you. And he came with a goat, slaughtered, and then he said, we will stay and, and roast it. So he came with his family and his kids, and they stayed and roasted the goat for, for me and my family and whoever, whichever guests I had. And I was like, of course I was touched. Can you, can you believe every Christmas for the last, is it four years, five years? Pastor Njero comes every Christmas with his family and they slaughter a goat for me. And they did it. Last year he was away. They had traveled to see their mom. But he sent, Pastor, he sent Reverend Cheche and he said, Reverend Cheche, please take my goat to Pastor M and slaughter it for him. So he sent his disciple to do that. Guess what happened? Reverend Cheche was like, why are you being blessed alone? Reverend Cheche bought another goat. He came with two. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's a crazy thing. Now, it sounds, now, of course, it's like, what are you doing? How is that? Is that carrying favor? Is that looking for your boss? Is that treating your boss nicely? Guess what began to happen? My heart softened to Pastor Njoro. Yes. And at some point, I started saying, this is my son. And I started calling him my son, by the way. And he's not the only one. Pastor Milton has also done things like that that just blow us away. Uh, but I started calling him my son. And others, by the way, it's not just them. I'm, I'm not, but I'm just saying, here's somebody who taught me. So here's what I began to do. I was like, all my life, I followed Pastor Oscar, Bishop Oscar. I never, ever called him my father. He was my boss, even though he was a father. Remember, fathers give birth. So he had given birth, and he treated me like any good. In fact, he was a better father than any father. I mean, he was such a good father to me. I never treat, I was, he was my boss. I said, this man is teaching me. So guess what I did? <laughs> I said, if Pastor Njoro can take a goat, me, I can take two goats. So I took my goats. But then I began to say, how do I bless this man? And so I started looking for ways to bless him. Pastor Karo and I would say, we're going to take some of our money, we're going to take a gift, financial gift, and just send it to him. And many times we just say, this is our, it's just a, it's just a gift because you're our father. The same way we bless our physical parents, we've chosen to be blessing you. And of course, I could see it was very uncomfortable for him. Pastor Oscar, this was not, we had worked for him for 13 years. We had never had anything like that. And he leads his own movement, a huge movement with many other people. But I was like, I am your son and you're my father. So guess what happened? Pastor Oscar started calling me his son. So during COVID, last year was his 60th birthday. And he, his wife had planned a huge party. It couldn't happen because of COVID, obviously. By the time she had planned it, the date came, we had been shut down, we could only have 25 people gathering. So she called the people, I mean, she had planned a big guest list, they couldn't have it. So what do they do? They invited, they could only invite 25 people. Now, I can imagine Pastor B who was planning this event, that's a huge thing. How do you, I mean, even me, if I was to try and invite 25 people who are closest to me, I don't even know how she did it, that's a hard call. It was so hard, they couldn't even invite sp spouses with 25. So when I got my invite, we are both their children, but they said, we really need 
Moravi to come and give a speech. But we can't have you, Carol, not because you're not his, our, our daughter, but because we can't. It's just that level, and we need him. We need one of you, and it, he needs to come because he's Pastor Oscar's son. And so Pastor B actually had to call Pastor Carol and just explain, like, please don't take it. And she, of course, she couldn't. I mean, we knew many people who are close to them who are not in that event. Uh, at that event, I think there were, there were maybe two or three Nairobi Chapel pastors um, who are amazing guys. Um, they're spiritual sons and daughters. Uh, I was Mavuno, so me, I'm coming in as... I don't even know how I'm representing the, the global church because <laughs> I was only a non-chapel non, non pastor there. Uh, his relatives, his sister, his, her husband, they're, they're, I mean, they're very close, and their kids. That was 25, huh? And a few, dig one or just, in fact, maybe just one dignitary. I mean, it was very limited, a very small circle, really nice event. And then they, asked me, they, they showed me the guest list of speeches, or three speeches. There was one by his children, the people he has ministered, so, sorry, his, his biological children. There was one by his spiritual ch children. And then there was one by one of those dignitaries. So guess what they said, you're the one representing all Pastor Oscar's children across the world. Of course I was shaken, because me, I thought it was just a speech I was giving. By the way, I hadn't even taken notes, Now I even had to started writing on a phone, because I was like, gosh, I thought I'm one of many, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the top, the three. So I gave my speech, and uh, I was very honored. Then he stood up, he had half, he, he gave, he was supposed to give a short speech, he talked for half an hour. Here's the crazy thing, 15 minutes of that half an hour, and I kid you not, 15 minutes, he spoke about Moravi. And he said, this is my son. And he started giving stories of when we met and how we've walked this journey together, of the thing, he just started sharing favorite memories. Let me tell you, I was totally embarrassed and out of place. Because I'm looking at Nairobi Chapel, their pastors are there. In fact, I felt, have you ever been in a place where a father is favoring children and you're wondering, no. You're going to make me be unpopular in this place. For 15 minutes, he just talked about me. And then he gave a story at the end of his talk where he talked about an, a dream he's always had to own an apartment in Malindi. Um, and how he prayed and he worked towards it, and it's finally complete. And his vision is that that place will become a place where pastors can be refreshed. Uh, he's going to be staying there for three months a year. But a week, every, after that, a week uh, every week, there will be a different pastor or missionary. And it's global people. I mean, it's people that he's giving a week as a gift. That's his ministry uh, at this age. He just feels that's something he wants to do. And then he went on to announce the congregation. Me, I thought he had finished with Moravi. He said to them, for me, my children, Moravi and Carol, are going to be the first ones to stay in that house. And he said, I want to bless them. In fact, they're going to pick the date, then everybody. Like, his biological children are there. His pastors are there. His relatives are there. Are you understanding something here? I was, in, I was in utter awe. I mean, I went first. Karen and I went the week before this. And then this week, guess who's there? His brother. Like, he gave us preference over his biological brother. What, what am I saying? I'm saying you are the one to decide to follow your leader. And I told the Lifeway team, Pastor Godwin is there. He's, he might be younger than some of you and Pastor Noel. But you know what? There are people who in, in life we are going to align and say, this is the Father God has put in my life right now. And as a result of doing that, they will be blessed. And there are people who are going to say, you know what? Even me, I hear God. <laughs> and you will see the difference. You will actually begin to see a difference. So I feel like as we're talking about instruction, we're not talking about, oh, become zombies, or you don't think, oh, what? I don't know. It doesn't sound like a zombie who makes 347,000 Kenya shillings. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And it's not magic. It's not. She didn't say that up, up more even put hands on her to become. She just said, I just followed what my spiritual father taught me, and God's resources have flowed. My prayer, guys, is that your resources will flow. I've prayed from this pulpit that you will be wealthy. I think you've heard me pray that prayer. I've prayed that everybody who, who, who's on our team will actually be wealthy. I've prayed that their marriages would be fantastic. And the reason I've prayed that is because I feel that's a, that's a gift God has given me. I've been married 27 years to my wife, and I believe we have a fantastic marriage. 
I really do believe that. We are friends, and we have a good, and it's not, and I, I, I don't say good because we are nice friends. I say good because we, miss, we minister to thousands of couples, and I know, even on that basis, we have a good marriage. And I really believe that my our blessing to you is that you would have good marriages. Do you understand? But listen, we give birth to you. You have to decide that these will be your parents. You have to decide. And you can be here and you're an orphan. You can be in the house, you're an orphan. You can be here, you're an employee. Or you can be a person who decides, I am a son. I am a daughter. <laughs> Kevin Kilonzi. <laughs> oh God. Oh God help us. God help us. God help us. Bless God. Hey, listen, we're gonna do something uh today, this afternoon. And what we want to do, we've just had tea, isn't it? So we can do a little something first and then come back like we did yesterday for lunch. We kind of want to apply what Apmo taught us. I believe that we're in a season of action, of rapid action. I believe that we're in a season when it's not just about ideas, it's about doing. And today we want to actually go out on an evangelistic prayer walk. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go out in the groups that we were in yesterday. But Pastor Njero is going to assign where we're going. We're all going to go into this great, great wall, wall estate as Afmo called it, <laughs> and we're going to go, so, so listen, listen to this, you are the spies, this is not an overt mission, it's a covert mission, and I can say, I, I can say why I'm saying this, I'm not trying to dramatize it, um, my good team that I was o helping organize, we had planned to do it, they made a mistake, they went and asked for permission, from the estate committee about whether we can go and do evangelism there. What's the first thing that an estate committee do when you ask for permission? Of course. There's no way a committee can ever make a decision that's positive. They need to have meetings first. So the answer was no. Now, for me, my policy in life sometimes, and please, you can quote me. If you're convicted about something that the Lord is asking you to do, sometimes it's better to, to, to apologize than to ask permission. I know pastor is teaching us rebellion here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so here's what I want us to do. You cannot go overtly because Mavuno Church is not going to do evangelism today. Mavuno Church is not going to do evangelism today. However, groups of two friends will walk into the public spaces of Great Wall Estate and just do a prayer walk because it is their legal constitutional right to do that. And if by chance they run into somebody, they can ask them how they can pray for them, and in the process, maybe even lead them to Christ. That's not a Mavuno church. It's you as a Kenyan or Ugandan or Nigerian. Just, you're just going to be walking as a child of God. Yeah? So what we're really saying is this is, this is not... Uh, so that's why you can't go around praying in tongues loudly. <laughs> you, you'll put us in trouble. So, so here's what we're going to do. As you walk... And, and, and you're going to go in twos. So in the group you're in yesterday, just pick a partner. Uh, if your spouse is there, it's okay. If you know somebody, but even if you don't know somebody, introduce yourself to that person and just walk together. And the main thing you'll be doing is you'll be praying. We want you to actually pray for the place you're going to be in. Because even, the, by the way, the prayers we sowed yesterday, I really believe there's something powerful that's going to happen in this ground. Uh, the atmosphere is shifting. Just because of the prayer. So we're, the first agenda of our prayer is atmosphere shift. And I believe as we walk around, we'll be praying for people to get saved. We'll be praying for the Holy Spirit to show up. This place is, has, it's become a den of iniquity. Uh, it's become, in Kenyan we say, it's, it's, it's a den of clan days. It's, it's a place where rich guys buy apartments so they can bring their girlfriends to hide. And then leave Nairobi in their big car on the weekend so they can come and spend a weekend and go back. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a place where every weekend the police are overwhelmed because of the domestic violence and all the issues that they get. Uh, these are the stories that Pastor Njero has, has shared with us. So there's a lot of just iniquity happening here. Uh, a lot of young people, so lots of just crazy stuff that goes on. But we're saying this is our territory. They came and found us here. They cannot come and change the atmosphere here. This is a good place to live. We're praying that it will be an amazing place, that children will grow up well, 
and that people here will actually appreciate the presence of the church in their territory. And remember, as you're doing this, you're doing this symbolically because as you pray for this headquarters, the blessings flow. You're saying whatever you pray for here is going to happen in your campus as well. Amen. So what we'll do is you go in twos and you just pray as you walk. Uh, you can take turns. You can, you can choose uh, if you need. But pray conversationally. Look like you're talking. Don't look like you're praying necessarily. And then here's the thing I want to challenge you. If you get a chance and you see somebody who's out there, uh, who's kind of randomly the Lord brings them into your path, here's what I want you to ask you to do. In fact, I'd want to challenge you to look for someone like that. Pray that God brings someone like that your way. And the, the question I want you to ask them is I want you to just say, hey, hi, uh, one second. Uh, my name is so-and-so, this is so-and-so. We actually are just from next door, Mavuno Church. And we're doing a little prayer of, for our neighborhood. And so we, we just wanted to ask if there are any specific things we can pray for you in your life that you would like to see answers to. Maybe somewhere you, just have, somewhere you have a need, something that you're concerned about, because we believe that God is able to answer prayer, and we actually just want to pray for people. And just trust that the Lord will open their hearts, because what, you're not asking them for anything. <laughs> you're saying, we want to pray for you. Um, and then once they do that, uh, once they share, then if the Lord leads you, then ask them the question, by the way, do you know Jesus? Have you asked Jesus into your life? Because if you do, one of our convictions is when you do, he actually is able to listen to you as his child. And he begins, some things begin to change in your life. If he leads you to do that, do it. If not, maybe he'll lead you to say, hey, by the way, we have service here every Sunday at, Pastor Njero? 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. And we would love for you to come and visit us uh, even this Sunday. And then just pray for them. And then let them go and keep walking. Is that okay? So it will take us about... 15 minutes, 10 minutes to walk there. Uh, we won't walk in a huge mob. We'll walk in twos. So people will just go at the speed of your partner. Um, the ones who can move fast, go fast. And then the ones who are a little slower, I hope nobody brought high heels. Uh, if you did, just drive a car there. And then what we'll do is when you get there, we'll take half an hour just like we did yesterday to pray. And Pastor Njero will tell us which, which estates that we make sure we cover the first three that are the ones that are full. And then we'll, we'll take another 10 minutes to walk. So please come and give instruction, and then we'll agree on what time we'll be back here. Thank you, sir. Can we celebrate Pastor Moretti? Come on, come on, come on. Let's Thank celebrate the man of God. Amen. Hey, come on, Mavuna. You can do better, yo. Let's celebrate the man of God. Thank, Thank you so you, much for vision, for Thank inspiring you. us. Thank we you. bless God for you. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Amen.